Now, at the last, when we click on this sign up button, we need to store all the values of this input text boxes in the database. So, as you know, inside the pages, inside this register.js, we have this empty on submit function. Previously, we added all the value in the MongoDB using Postman API testing tool. We successfully test the API using Postman. Now, what I want when I click on this on submit, I want to store all these values in the MongoDB database. But let me first show you the result of this console.log. Back to the project and open the console. And if I type here the username, then the email, then the password. And when I click on the sign up button, you're going to get an object. Inside this object, you will have all the data of your form. Now, what I want, I want to pass this data to the backend. So to pass this data to the backend, what we need to do is we need to call fetch function of JavaScript. So here inside this on submit, when we validate all the input text boxes, this on submit is going to execute and then we create a constant option variable. And then inside this variable, we specify options to the fetch method. So we first specify here method, which is type of post. Then we need to specify here headers. Headers is going to be content type application JSON. Just out of that, we need to specify body. Body is going to be JSON dot stringify. And we need to pass here data. So I'm going to pass this values here. This one, the form data values. And just out of that, right down here, I'm going to say fetch. Or you can call here await fetch. And then inside this fetch, you need to specify your URL. You have your sign up inside this API and inside this auth folder right here. I'm going to open the Postman API testing tool and here is the URL of this endpoint. Localhost 3000 API auth sign up. I'm going to specify this URL here like this. And just out of that, we need to specify all these options as a second parameter. I'm going to specify here comma and say here options. Just out of that, if you want to get the response in JSON format, then you can call here then response and then you can say here response.json. So this is going to return the response in JSON format. And then you can get this response using then method. So you just need to say here data and console.log. So in the console.log, when you make a request, you will get your data. But I'm not going to console.log this data. Instead, I'm going to redirect the user to the login page. So what I have to do is I have to call use router at the top. So I'm going to say here import. In the object, we need to say use router from next router so i'm going to call this statement use router from next router just out of that you need to call this hook inside your component so right down here i'm going to say constant router is equal to use router and just out of that right down here inside this then here i'm going to call this statement this one copy this and specify that here but as you know you don't have this status so you can use your data if you have data inside this variable, then execute this statement. And then what you have to do is inside this push, right here, you have to call this localhost 3000, something like this. And now if you register a new user and click on the sign up, it's going to redirect you to the login page. And then using this login page, you can log in with the user credential. Now I'm going to leave everything as it is. And I'm going to back to the console. Here you can notice I'm getting this console warning, which is no secret. The next auth used to generate a secret for convenience when the user did not define one. In that case, you get this warning. To solve this warning, you need to specify secret property to the next auth. So inside the next auth, just after this provider, right down here, you can specify secret. And here you need to specify the random base64 value. So you have to open your terminal, stop the development server, clear the screen, and type a command called open ssl random hyphen base 64 the random 64 bit is going to generate a value copy it and then specify that right here to the secret save this file and now if you say npm run dev you can see you're not going to get any warning inside your console now just out of that let me show you how you can protect the route inside nextjs now let's suppose that you also have the profile route inside your pages so for example, let's suppose that if I create here a component with the name profile.js and let me say here export default function and here I'm going to return an object and then here I'm going to say section and specify some 
Delvin classes here. So the classes is going to be container MX auto text center. Just out of that, here I'm going to add H3 heading tag and then specify some Delvin classes here as well. So I'm going to specify here class names is going to be text for Excel and font bold. And then I'm going to specify here text profile page. Just out of that, right down here, I'm going to call the link component and then specify here link to the home page. And then in the href attribute, we need to specify here address of the home page. At the top, don't forget to import link from next link. Now let me save this file and show you the result first. Back to the project. And now if I try to access this profile, let's suppose if I remove this login and specify here profile, then you can see I can easily access this profile page without the need of authentication. I want to protect this page from unauthorized user. In that case, right down here, I'm going to say export async function. Then the function name is get server side props and then you specify here an object and say here request and write down here you have to say constant session is equal to await and then call here get session and you get this get session from the next auth react library so at the top you have to say import in the object get session from next auth react so from this library you get this get session function and then inside this function you just need to specify an object and pass this request this one this is going to return the session to this variable and now you can say here if you don't have session then return an object and inside this object you can redirect the user so pass here a property redirect and then specify here destination the destination is going to be the login page so i'm going to pass here login and just after that i'm going to specify here comma and say here permanent false just after that at the end right down here i'm going to return the props with session so if we have the authorized user i'm going to return this statement so let me just specify here authorize user return session so i'm going to return this session when there is an authorized user otherwise i'm going to redirect the user to the login page let me save the changes. Oops, I think I misspelled here. Destination. When I back to the project, you can see if I try to access the profile page, I'm going to redirect to the login page. Now, if I want to access the profile page, I have to log in first. So let me specify my email right here and the password like this. When I click on the login button, I'm going to redirect to the login page. And now if I try to access the profile page, Let's suppose if I click on this profile page, you can see I can now access the profile page. Now, if I back to the home page, I can click on this link. And if I click on this sign out and try to access the profile page again, this is going to redirect me to the login page because now I'm not the authorized user. So this is how you can protect all your routes of your application. So I hope you understand many new things from this project. If you find anything useful, make sure to press the like button, share this video with your friends, subscribe for more latest videos. And yes, if you want to download this project, you have to head on to the 17 final branch. You have to first clone this project using git, clone and the project URL. I will put the link in the description. Just out that, once you clone the project, you have to enter into this final branch. You have to specify git switch 17 and press tab. This is going to auto complete this branch and press enter. Once you press enter, you are in the last branch of this project. And now from here, you can get all the source code of this project. To run this project don't forget to execute npm install command and then specify npm run dev like this video if you find anything useful subscribe for more latest videos that is all for now i will see you in the next one